five signs that you are living in an economic depression, and they're not what you might think. A big welcome to the channel. We like to talk about survival in a crisis world. So are you living in an economic depression? Well, here are some unconventional indicators that you are. The McDonald's that you frequent is empty. Your local petrol station has no cars filling up. The price of something, anything has gone way up. Parks are filled with working age people. And finally, your government is using words like stimulus and revival and support and emergency public spending. And if you're thinking, this is silly, why am I listening to this? Well, I think it's a good idea to keep an eye on conventional economic indicators, the ones that you can see here. GDP, the debt to GDP ratio, Japan, I'm looking at you, unemployment rates, wage growth, the Gini index, all that malarkey, but I don't trust them. And if you do, that's great, but I personally take them with a pinch of salt and I use my own indicators, the ones that I can see with my own eyes as well. So let's go straight to Mackie D's. If the McDonald's restaurants around you are quiet during what should be the busy times of the day, then you may be in an economic depression. Companies like McDonald's, who are hands down the leaders in their fields, are the last bastions of defence in an economic depression. McDonald's is like Yoda in Revenge of the Sith. Every other Jedi, or in this case business, has been completely decimated, cut down to a million pieces. But Yoda, the smartest, the fastest, the most skilled, if Yoda dies, you know there's no hope for the galaxy. And it's the same with McDonald's. McDonald's dominates the restaurant industry. It's convenient, it's fast, it has one of the best menus, it's one of the cheapest. So if you swing by your local Mackie D's at say midday and it's dead, or 6 p.m. and it's dead, then you know your economy is in serious doggy doo-doo. Everyone around you has zero spare cash. And governments may be able to cook the books and come up with a really nice nominal GDP number for you, but this, this should be one of your big signs that all is not well. And you can do this litmus test with any industry leader where you can actually go out, walk around with your eyes open and take stock of what's happening. You can go to Costco, they are the leader for club membership wholesale, or Marriott, they're one of the leaders for hotel chains. Once these giants start folding, then, well, not good. Moving right along, petrol stations. If your local gas station has no cars filling up when it usually should be busy, say Friday afternoon after work, that's a bad sign. A sign that you've got a big financial crisis on your hands. I started a master's degree in 2011. This was not long after the 2008 recession. And I remember my professor basically scoffing at 2008. He said, this is not a recession. A recession is when people don't drive because they can't afford the petrol. Those words have stayed with me all these years because I think he was right. And if you agree or don't agree, feel free to comment down below. I would love your thoughts. Next is the price of something. Pick anything, a can of Coke, a bag of carrots, a pair of shoes, a paddling pool, whatevs. Let's say that today it costs $1. Then you notice that next month it's gone up to $2. Red flag for you right there. But let's say it goes up again the following month to $4 and the month after that to $10. You get my drift. This is a seriously bad sign, guys. You need to have a plan if you start to see this happening. Plenty of people don't understand inflation, and I don't want to sound harsh or make you feel bad, but guys, if you don't understand inflation, you do not understand money and you don't understand the economy. You have to understand inflation and know that various governments understate it and that in a crisis world, many governments might want it. The one true ring is trying to get back to its master. It wants to be found. So you need a plan for a scenario in which prices are going up exponentially around you. And if you need help with that, comment down below. Next, the number of people who are not pensioners or parents pushing prams about, who are hanging out at your local park during work hours. Let's say you take the day off work on a Tuesday and you have a lie-in and you decide to go for a jog at, say, 10 a.m. And as you're working up a sweat, running laps around your local park, you notice a bunch of men in their 30s playing football, a group of women in their 20s playing basketball, men and women in their 30s and 40s and 50s having coffees and walking their dogs, and those two tennis courts that are almost always abandoned and covered in moss, well, they're busy too with working age people. Again, big sign that you are living in an economic depression. It's really easy to fudge official unemployment figures. You just need to narrow the definition of unemployment. But this, 
the stuff you can see with your own eyes, you can't fudge. And the last one, when your government starts using words like stimulus package and emergency purchase program and economic support. A few weeks ago, my husband comes up to me and says, hey, babe, the government just announced another hundred billion stimulus package. And my answer was, well, where's the money coming from? And he said, taxes. And I replied with, and? And his reply, what do you mean, and? You see, this is the thing. When governments are short on cash, they be like, hey, Mr. Bank, Mr. Pension Fund, Mr. Investor, whoever has cash, we're not fussy. Just let us borrow some of yours and we'll give you this thing called a bond, this piece of paper, this debt note, and we'll repay you with interest. But in a crisis world, instead of collecting taxes and coming good on their promises, the government finds itself going, whoa, 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 how come my tax revenues are so low this year? What do you mean people have stopped spending? What do you mean companies have frozen recruitment and fired half of their staff? Gosh darn it, we really, really needed that VAT and stamp duty and property tax and capital gains tax and income tax and corporations tax and payroll tax. We can't pay the bondholders anything, not even the interest. And that's bad, that's really, really bad. So when a government uses words like these, be alert, you might be in an economic depression or about to tumble into one. And a couple of honourable mentions, if you live under or near a flight path, are planes flying above you? If you notice a huge decrease in the amount of air traffic, things aren't good. In a good economy, there are lots of cargo planes, commercial flights, private jets, you name it. In an economic depression, it's quite the opposite. And the other one is LinkedIn connection requests. When a recession or depression kicks in, you can betcha you'll start to see a tidal wave of these. And just a quick caveat on these indicators, during an economic lockdown, of course things are different. It's really difficult to apply indicators where you have to go out and look at stuff because, well, everyone's stuck at home living the dream. All right, thank you very much for watching. If you think I've missed anything or you just completely disagree, that's okay, comment down below. We can chew the fat. But if you liked this video, please, please click the like button and please consider subscribing. In the meantime, keep your chin up and I'll be seeing you soon.